Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna go over luminosity masks. So what exactly they are, how we can create them in Photoshop, and then how we can apply them in editing to take our photos to the next level. All right, so what exactly are luminosity masks? So luminosity masks are masks that are created from different brightness values in a photo. So we could create luminosity masks based off of the highlights, or we can make shadows luminosity masks, or we can make midtones luminosity masks, which would be somewhere between the highlights and the shadows. So there's a couple ways that we can go about creating these luminosity masks. We can either make them manually, or we can use something like the Pro Panel to create them a little bit quicker and have some more flexibility with how we use them. So I'm gonna briefly show you guys how to create these luminosity masks manually, but then I'm gonna jump into the panel to give you guys an overview of how we can create them and use them using the Pro Panel. So if you're only interested in learning how to use the panel, you can skip past this part. I'll put a timestamp in the description so you can skip ahead. But to create them manually, what we're gonna do is go over here to channels, and you're gonna see an RGB composite channel and then a red, green, and blue channel separate. So what we need to do is command click on the RGB channel or control click on a PC, and you're gonna see the selection pop up here. So we've essentially just selected all the highlights in the photo. So if we make a mask now, we'll see this channel mask here, and we can rename this to be brights one. And this is gonna be a luminosity mask with a very broad selection of the highlights. So the way that we can constrict this to basically include less of the highlights is to subtract from this mask that we created here. And to do so, all you need to do is with this still selected here, you're gonna hit Command, Option, and Shift and hover over this channel mask. And you can see a little X pop up in the, in the box by the hand. And that indicates that we're about to subtract from this. So now if I click again, you're gonna see a more constricted selection. And if I hit this mask button down here and I select the mask, you're gonna see basically a more constricted highlights mask. So I'm gonna name this Brights 2. And we could continue to do this Command Option Shift Click or Control Alt Shift Click and create masks and basically make some very constricted masks of the highlights. So I'm just gonna name this Brights 3. And you could keep going at this point, but I'm just gonna do three of them for this example. And I'm gonna deselect. So now I need to talk about how to do the shadows. So to do the shadows, you're gonna select the RGB channel again, Command Click, you're gonna see the highlights pop up. This is the broad view of the highlights. Then you're gonna select the inverse of this, which is gonna be the shadow. So you're gonna go up to select and then inverse. And then this is gonna basically flip that selection around. So now if we make a mask and we show this mask, you're gonna see we made a selection based off of the shadows and the image. And this is gonna be a very broad shadows mask. So I'm just gonna name this shadows one. And then we can do the same thing. So command option shift or control alt shift on PC and click in that mask and then make another mask. And you can see we basically have reduced the amount of shadows included. And I'll do that one more time. And now you can see it's a little bit more constricted. So I'll name this shadows two, and then I'll name this shadows three. And again, you could keep doing this basically to restrict even more and get a very, very selective targeted mask for the darkest shadows if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna delete that because I just wanted to do three for this example here. So now I wanna briefly talk about how to do the midtones. So to do the midtones, you're gonna select your RGB channel again, but this time you're gonna hit Command A or Control A to select the whole image. And then we're gonna do something a little different. Instead of hitting Command and Option and Shift, we're just gonna hit Command and Option and you're gonna see a minus mark here pop up on the box. So we're gonna subtract one of the brights masks and then we're gonna subtract one of the shadows masks so that we're only left with the midtones. So with command and option or control and all on PC held down, I'm gonna subtract brights two and then I'm gonna subtract shadows two. So now if I make a mask here and I show you, then we wind up with this midtones here. So you could continue refining that process if you wanted to to make a more constricted midtones mask. But for this example, I'm gonna stop here. So once we've created our luminosity masks manually, we need to figure out how to apply them to the image manually. So what we can do is we can just command and click to make this a selection, and then go back to our layer and then apply that directly as a layer mask with that selection. Or we could selectively paint in that selection on a layer mask. So this is what I'm gonna do. If I wanna blend in the highlights from this underexposed shot, for example, into this overexposed shot, then I need to find a mask that's gonna work well to blend that in. So I don't wanna make something that's too broad or else I'm gonna blend in unwanted parts of the photo. And I don't wanna make something that's too constricted or else the blend won't look as good because basically there's gonna be a very noticeable transition where we paint that. 
So I want something in the middle, so Brights 2 looks like a good candidate here. So if I just hold down Command and click on this, it's gonna make that selection for that mask that we created. And I can go back here, so let me deselect that real quick, Command D or Control D. And I'm gonna make a layer mask on this overexposed layer here. And then I'm gonna reselect, so Command Shift D or Control Shift D. And now with my white layer mask selected, I'm gonna paint with black, so hit B on the keyboard for your brush. I'm gonna paint with black in this selection here so that we can very specifically paint in the highlights from the underexposed shot from the layer below, basically through this mask. So the way that layer masks work is that white conceals and black reveals. So if we paint within this selection we've generated from this Brights mask here, then basically we're only painting within the selection where it's white or where it's being revealed. Then basically we're only painting in through the selection which we've created from just the highlights which are shown in white. So if I select my mask again here and I paint with black on this, I'm gonna reveal that underexposed shot underneath. So I don't wanna paint in 100% flow and 100% opacity because the shot underneath is very, very different in exposure. I typically wanna make my shots close in exposure before I do blending, but for this example, I'm just gonna quickly show you. I would just paint at a lower flow, maybe even a lower opacity, and I would just do a couple swipes and kinda of just very carefully bring in some of those highlights there. And if I deselect and I zoom in, you can see that we have basically have just brought those highlights in. So I'm just gonna turn this mask off and on. And it's not perfect because like I said, the layer underneath is very dark compared to the layer that we just blended it into. So a quick fix for this would be to just make a curves layer, or you can open up Camera Raw and brighten it as well. And then basically you're just gonna brighten this up and be careful not to blow the highlights out. But that's just gonna undo what we basically just did but you can brighten this up just a little bit. Let me turn that off and on. You can see it just smoothed out that transition in the dark areas here where we blended the highlights in and it doesn't look as bad. So if I turn that mask off and on, you can see we brought back those highlights now that were blown out in the overexposed shot perfectly and very selectively using a luminosity mask. All right, so let's talk about how to make them with the pro panel. So I'm just gonna delete that and delete this mask here. So the pro panel is gonna make our lives a little bit easier because we already have all those masks that we just created manually. Basically right here is numbers. So if we wanted to make that Brights 2 mask, for example, we would just click two and it would quickly show us the preview here. And then we could apply that as a selection. So I'm gonna load that as a selection. And then I'm gonna deselect because I forgot to make a mask first and then reselect. And then now I can just paint this right in and you can see that you know we basically just saved a bunch of time. So same deal, this is not bright enough, so I can just select this layer here, deselect and make a curves layer, and I could quickly just brighten that up, and basically you know we're good to go with just a few clicks. Alternatively, we could have just brightened up this underexposed shot a little bit and brought the highlights down just to be closer in exposure to this so that it'd be a more smooth blend. So once you're happy with your blend, you can just click stamp up, and then you can keep working on the image as if it's one photo. So actually, just for good measure, let me just show you really quickly, if we turn that curves layer off, how we could just quickly just brighten this image up in Camera Raw. So we just click Camera Raw there. We can brighten up the exposure and then bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows slightly here. It's not gonna matter that we have shadow noise in this image because again, we're only blending in the highlights from up in this top portion of the sky right there. So if I click OK now, you're gonna see that we have a very much more smooth transition here. We don't have any type of issues with the dark spots showing through basically in the brighter shot now, even without the curves layer turned on. So that's how you would do a blend using luminosity masks very quickly. So let's say that I wanna brighten up the shadows in this image. Maybe I would select a darks mask, maybe darks four, or maybe even darks five, so it would be a little bit more targeted here. And then I could just output this as a curves or levels or exposure, for example. So let's do curves. And then I can just bring up the brightness here using a curves layer. And you're seeing that it's only affecting the shadows here through that mask that we created. And it's not gonna affect the highlights at all and barely any of the midtones really. So that was more of a broad mask that we created and a broad area that we blended back in. Let's say that we wanted to do something a little bit more constricted. So maybe we have a shot like this from Antelope Canyon where we have very small areas of the highlights blown out. And you know if you've ever been here that you gotta bracket your shots or else you wind up with you know, underexposed highlights that are intact but a completely black image here. 
So if we did brighten this image up, we would have a ton of shadow noise and it just would not look as good as if we got our shadows and midtones from an image like this that was properly exposed. So the workaround for this is that we just need to blend in these highlights back from the underexposed shot. So again, I like to get my images close in appearance. So I'm gonna open this up in camera raw real quick. And this is just gonna help the blend where the highlights basically meet the edges of the shadows and midtones. So I'm gonna brighten this up a lot because we can still keep these highlights intact when I bring the highlights back down. So I'm just gonna zoom in to just double check that everything looks good. And I'm gonna bring up the shadows as well and also the blacks. So again, we have a ton of noise here in the shadows, but it's not gonna matter because the highlights are clean and that's the only area that we're gonna blend back in. So now if I turn this off and on, you can see it's a lot closer in appearance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an inverted layer mask. So I'm just gonna hit shift or hold down shift and click the mask button here. And we basically have hidden this layer and we can basically selectively paint it back in using a white brush on this black mask. So I need to make a highlight selection. So I'm gonna cycle through my highlights. So lights one is too broad. Lights two looks pretty good. And lights three is gonna be way too constricted. So I think lights two looks good. Let's stick with this. I'm gonna apply this as a selection. And then now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see and make my brush a little bit bigger. And I need to select the layer mask and have my brush set to white because we're painting again on an inverted mask here. And now if I paint over this selection, you can see that we're only painting in the areas in our selection and not anything around it. And you can see we very carefully have painted those highlights back in. So if I deselect now and I zoom in, you can see if I turn this layer off that we've only brought those highlights back in the areas where they were blown out using our luminosity mask selection that was very targeted. So the same thing could work also on a cityscape image, for example, if we have an overexposed shot like this where we have the highlights blown out and we have an underexposed shot, we can selectively blend those highlights back into a small area. So again, I like to have my images pretty close in appearance, so I'm just gonna brighten these guys up real quick. And because we have underexposed this, we have our highlights completely intact. So I can raise the exposure again. We're only blending in the highlights, so it doesn't matter if we wind up with shadow noise. So I'm just gonna click OK. And then if I click my overexposed layer here and I make a layer mask, I can make a targeted selection of the highlights. So maybe something like that. And I can apply that as a selection and select my mask here and paint with black. And I can just very carefully bring these highlights back in here. You can see we're bringing those highlights in very carefully and selectively. And I'm not gonna affect the sky at all if I paint in because we have our selection constricted just to those brightest highlights. If I turn that selection off now, you can see if I turn that mask off and on, we've only carefully brought back in those brightest highlights using our luminosity mask selection. All right, so that's blending with the luminosity mask. Let's talk about a couple different ways we can also use them. So let's say we want to darken portions of the image based off of the brightness values. So if I wanna darken this bright area here in the highlights, I could just make a luminosity mask, maybe two. One's gonna to be too broad. So two looks good. And I could just set this as a levels or a curves or exposure layer. And again, I keep using curves because I love curves, but you can use whichever way that you feel appropriate. And now you can see I'm just bringing the highlights down, but because we've selected that luminosity mask and applied it as a mask to that adjustment layer, we're only revealing that adjustment through the areas that are white. So you can see if I turn this layer off and on, we're only darkening those brightest pixels that we selected with our luminosity mask. So we could also use this for dodging and burning, for example. So if we wanted to do some dodging on the highlights and some burning on the shadows, we can make a luminosity mask. So let's do one. And I can refine this a little bit so it's a little bit more constricted. So let's just do something like that. So you can see in white where the mask is gonna be revealed. And I'm gonna output this as a dodge and burn overlay layer. So now if I paint with white, for example, on this dodge and burn layer, it's only gonna be applied through that layer mask that we just created with our luminosity mask. So this means that I can quickly dodge on the highlights only, and it's not gonna affect the shadows at all. Turn that off and on. And we could do the same thing for the shadows. So for example, if I do something like darks four or darks five, 
I could darken the shadows using burning by outputting this as a dodge and burn layer as well. And I could just paint with black. And now you can see we're not affecting the highlights at all. Like if I paint up in the sky here, it's not going to do anything because we have a very targeted mask that we created from the shadows. So if I group these two together here and turn that off and on, you can see we've done dodging and burning very selectively, very quickly with just luminosity mask and a couple clicks. So we could also use luminosity mask to make adjustments in color. So let's say that I want to add some color or change the color in the core of the Milky Way here. Again, I can make a luminosity mask that corresponds with the area I'm trying to target. And I could output that perhaps as a hue and saturation layer. And then I could increase the saturation or I could change the hue of it if I wanted to. And you can see that we're very selectively changing the color in just those areas that we have selected using our luminosity mask through the mask itself. So you can see that we have adjusted this image from here to here essentially with just a few clicks of the mouse. And lastly, guys, I want to show you a quick trick. So let me turn off the dodge and burn and the coloring that we did. And I want to show you how you can dodge and burn with levels or curves layers with luminosity masks. So this is really simple and really quick. So let's make a luminosity mask for lights one again. And this time I'm going to refine it just a little bit. Something like that looks good. And if I output this as a levels layer here, all I need to do is simply change the blend mode. So if I change this to screen, I haven't done any adjustments at all. Just one click of the blend mode, and you can see we've created this brighten effect. And it's only being revealed through that lights mask here. So I do affect the Milky Way here, and you can see that it's brightening that up a lot. So to get rid of that, all we would need to do is make a quick selection of the sky. So this could be fairly rough. I'm just going to do just the sky. I'm not too worried about that area right there. You guys can take your time with this here. but I'm just going to select the sky here and then select my layer mask and I can show it and click B on the keyboard. And then now where I paint black is going to take it out of that mask. So I can take it out of that area in the sky, for example. And if I hide that now and deselect, now you can see that that lightning effect is only applied to the foreground there and the highlights. All right, so the same thing we can do for the shadows. So I'm just going to make a darks mask again, maybe something like five and I'll put it as levels, but this time I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. So you can see that this has a darkening effect. And you can see the darkening is only being applied to the shadows through this luminosity mask that we created here. So that's a little bit strong, so I'm going to turn that down just a bit, something like that. But if I group these two layers together here and turn those off and on, you can see that we've dodged the highlights and burned the shadows essentially just with a mask a levels layer and changing the blend mode. So that's just a few ways that we can use luminosity masks to do blending or make adjustments to our images in a very targeted way. So again, you can do these manually the way that I showed you with the channels, or you can use something like the pro panel that's going to make it a little bit easier to create them and give you a little more flexibility as far as how you output and use them. If you have any questions at all, guys, leave a comment and I'm going to have a full training on luminosity masks coming very soon. So be on the lookout for that.